Welcome back to the channel. This video is on geology, volcanology, magma, and we're discussing what a large igneous province is, an LIP. This is the Earth Science Classroom. An LIP is a very large area of magma flow, normally called a flood basalt. It covers an area of over 100,000 square kilometers to become an LIP. It is a very long lasting flow between one and five million years. It is usually mafic magma with lower silica content and it has a low viscosity and higher temperatures. For an LIP, the L stands for large, and we discussed that it has to be over 100,000 square kilometers to become an LIP. The I stands for igneous, so this refers to the rock type, that the cooling and consolidating and crystallizing magma and lava, which is mafic or mafic in characteristics, will cool down and form various types of igneous rocks, most commonly basalt. So for LIP, the L stands for large, and the size and the area of the magma, the I is the igneous, the type of rock it cools and forms into, and P is the province, a term, again, based on the size and the geographic location of where this magma is going to flow over a certain time, and each province has its own characteristics and its own time frame of when the magma was flowing on the surface. There are three types of LIPs. The first is the continental flood basalt. These are located in various parts of the world on different sized land masses. This type is the most common and the easiest to study as it's on the continents with easier access compared to the other types of LIPs. The continental flood basalt is a shorter lived event of less than 5 million years and the magma's origin is generally deeper within the mesosphere or the lower mantle which equates for its different characteristics and composition being a lot lower in silica content per weight and also making it a lot hotter and a lot less viscous so faster moving. It's lower silica mafic composition, it's higher temperature, low viscosity means it flows quicker and a much larger volume. The next type is the oceanic plateau or ocean basin flood basalt. These form very large extensive oceanic plateaus on the ocean floor and in some cases can even increase the thickness of the oceanic crust around these plateaus when they cool down to an average of seven kilometers of additional thickness onto the average or normal oceanic crust making this very large plateau across a large area of the ocean floor and they do erode quicker because of the environment and the action of water constantly interacting with the rock and they are obviously difficult to study as they are generally on ocean floors that are over two to three thousand meters below sea level. The next type of LIP is silicic. These are located around continental margins and they form part of the upper mantle composition and they have a higher silica weight compared to the other types, both oceanic and continental, because of the mixture. This is a mixing large igneous province interacting with continental crust in addition to that mafic magma which originates from deeper down, but this is an interacting type mixing in and assimilating in parts of the continental crust within that mafic magma mixture. Placing these three types of LIPs on a profile of the upper mantle and lithospheric crust, you have the oceanic plateau or ocean basin flood basalt, obviously part of the ocean floor. You have the silicic type of LIP on the coastal areas and the margins of the continents and then you have the full-blown most common continental flood basalt part of the continental landmass. Each type of LIP has various similarities and differences when it comes to the composition, the mineral and element makeup of the magma. It's mostly going to be mafic magma coming back originating from deeper in the lower mantle around the core mantle boundary and even towards the asthenosphere and 
upper mesosphere. The main rock that's formed is basalt, around 90% of all the mafic igneous magma is going to consolidate into basalt and forms the majority of the ocean floor. Its density is 3.0 grams per centimeter cubed and it's mostly composed of plagioclase, feldspar, olivine, pyroxene, and biotite, making it a little heavier, a little denser, darker in color, and of course, mafic in character. And the composition of the LIP is going to dictate the type. So the flood basalts are generally lower silica, around 45 to 50 percent weight, with higher magnesium and, and iron, deriving from that lower mantle origin. And the silicic LIP, as mentioned before, is a mixture of both that mafic, deeper derived magma with that continental, more granitic, more andesitic mixture of igneous rock which is mostly intrusive which has a different variety of minerals such as quartz feldspar and biotite when lip flows on the earth's surface be it an oceanic environment or on the continent they form these stunning features on the landscape which are called traps the word is derived from the swedish word trapper which means steps because these formations on the outside look like these staggered steps of layered rock. And inside this LIP, you have a mixture of these steps and pillow basalt formations in these large oval areas. And then underneath that, you might have this large amount of basaltic columns. Because as the magma is flowing up to the surface, it's going to cool down into this column shape as it flows up it's going to cool down and form these beautiful columns there are two main theories to how lips form the first is called the mantle plume theory with the head and tail this involves a large volume of magma that's going to start around the core mantle boundary in the lower mantle which is called the mesosphere and make its way up it's more hot more buoyant it's going to make its way through the mantle towards the upper mantle the asthenosphere and going to sit and accumulate a large volume of magma called the head right around the moho and melt into the above lithosphere and crust be it the oceanic or continental now this theory includes this tail or conduit which is supplying the mafic magma that's high in temperature low in viscosity from the deeper regions of the mantle around the core mantle boundary and moving up towards the surface creating this large volume or flow of magma onto the surface creating this lip whether it be on the margin of a continent on the main continent or on the ocean floor. Now this is the main theory. The other theory is the impact induced theory where you have an asteroid or meteorite impact on the Earth's surface which is going to disrupt the dynamics and temperature and pressure and movement of the mesosphere, the lower mantle and the rock plus the heat and the impact and the energy that's going to be added into the Earth's system from this colliding piece of space rock and cause magma to react and respond and push up away from the impact site and create this flow of magma creating an LIP. Now both of these mechanisms to form LIPs are separate to plate tectonics and the current understanding of convection currents in the asthenosphere moving and dragging and shifting the above lithospheric plates be it a major or minor plate, and creating plate boundaries, creating subduction zones, creating rift valleys, creating orogeny zones and mountain ranges, and creating transform plate boundaries with friction and earthquakes. This is separate to this LIP theory of an additional volume of magma that's separate from convection currents that is originating deeper down into the lower mantle. Whereas the plate tectonic theory and understanding is that it derives from the upper mantle around the asthenosphere and the low velocity zone between 150 to 250 kilometers in depth. So these two systems of providing magma and heat to the surface work differently within the Earth's interior. 
This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.